One of the things that a lot of people don't talk about when they teach textualis is the fact that the angles are so important. People look at the L, T, J, H, Y and say, oh, but those curves don't actually belong to the set. So we have L, because that will just come around and curve and give us that. And by dropping some ink from the corner of the nib into that L and moving out and back, you get the little ear. Some people call it a tongue. Quite nice. So the T is the same, it's just shorter. and straight, straight from there. So that's how you end up with one and turn to the corner and pull. Some manuscripts do a little ball, leave the ball alone. J, which didn't really exist until modern times. One, two. Notice the distance of this is actually the width of the nib. So we're going to go J and down. That is the length of the nib. Why is this not as long as that? Because it's a curve. So on a curve, we have two lengths of the nib. Can you see that? Yeah? H, one length of the nib, straight down, quadrant, lozenge, quadrant, sorry, there was a curve there. And then we go one and down, and quadrant, lozenge, downstroke, quadrant. Note, I am not doing this. Do you see that? That is not textualis quadrata. That is a variation. So be very careful with what you're learning. Use the historical scripts as a basis to learn mm. the letter forms, and then the variations come after L, T, J, H, and Y. One, two, three, lozenge, quadrant, downstroke, lozenge, straight line, And that will give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nice and simple.